Hello. My garage is in a constant state of flux. I'm a handyman, so we're constantly adding things and putting things back in the truck. So we can go out and work. It's proper tools and junk and tidbits and everything that I need. But anyway, besides that, Than I remember. I am going to. I've been getting a lot of questions about the bike um, on YouTube. Not a lot, but I don't know, maybe five or six of them over the course of a month or two. I suppose it's springtime and people are wanting to build a bike. And in particular, I get a lot of questions because of this is a La Jolla Next bike, and I think it's a great bike. But uh, in regards to how to fit the engine on this thing and it really wasn't that hard but what I'm going to do first is I'm going to take it out it's pretty heavy um, I'm going to take it out and do a cold start and this could go horribly wrong it may not run but I'm going to take it out run it down the road and then I'll bring it back and I'll go over it a little bit more close up people were disappointed in some of my movies as it wasn't close up enough and uh I'll show you what I did to the bike to make it work. There were a few things, and uh, I'll show you some of the things around my shop that I use, but I'm gonna take this thing out for a ride. Now, it's mixed fuel, right? And it sat in here all winter long. I keep the garage warm. It doesn't go below freezing. Usually keep it around 40 degrees or so in here. And this is Buffalo, so we were down in the 20s a lot. See if I can run some good gas through or whatever's in the tank anyway, year old, and see if it runs. And then I'll come back and go over the bike and show you guys all the, the, the things that we've, we've done to it. Squirrel didn't even care that he was there. As the squirrel moved, once the squirrel realized he was there, he moved, and Cooper took off after it. Cat on a leash. Yep. He's pretty good. He's not going to like the bicycle. I don't think it'll even start. I'm going to see, though. When was the last time you had it going? Cooper. Last year, with the gas in there, but I turned it off. Yeah. And I turn it off, but then it goes somewhere. So it either evaporated, which I think what happened is it all leaked down into the motor and then evaporated. The motor doesn't care about that. So I'm going to just... Yeah, they, they were fine. I keep them pretty soft anyway. There we go. We'll see how that works. Yeah. All right.
Yeah, once it started, it took me until about halfway down the, the way. All right, I'm gonna go in the back. Might as well do it right here, so I'll show you. Tell you guys a little bit about how I put this bike together, and a little review on what I've had to deal with after putting over 309 miles. Because I actually put this speedometer on the bike about a year after I was riding it, so I have over 309 miles. I, I couldn't tell you how much, and I believe that this thing's pretty accurate. Also, I usually cruise at about 25 miles an hour. Sometimes as high as 30. Beyond 30, it gets a little uncomfortable. I've had it beyond 45. I've had it a little over 45. And that was because I had an intake leak and the, I was probably wrecking the motor, but don't recommend that. But it will do that. And uh, the piston starts to float and act real funny, so it's, it's not good. So let's kind of go through things one at a time. The thing that people have asked about the most, I think, is the intake manifold. And they do, oh boy, it's gonna fall over. They do sell an offset intake manifold on Amazon. It wasn't offset enough for this bike. It, it, it still hit, and you can see even with my, my larger one that I built myself, it's still very, very close, but far enough. Um, and actually the base of it is the original um, offset intake manifold that I sacrificed and cut once I realized it wasn't gonna fit. So I welded on this part and I cut a little pie shape out of it, bent it together. You can see that this side of it over here is still whole. And then I welded it around. And then I welded on this little bit here to you know, point the carburetor kind of back more for aesthetics instead of just having it come right out the side. Um, and uh, that was it. And I did that with a flux core welding. Uh, I, my, my welder was set up for flux core. I don't recommend that. It, it, you make much nicer welds with gas welding. And I didn't have a bottle of gas at the time, so I used my flux core kit and had to grind it so that it, they weren't so embarrassing. But anyway, so I built that myself, and I did that using galvanized conduit. It was $6 for a 10-foot length from Home Depot. Um, now, you're not supposed to weld galvanized because it makes, it makes terrible fumes that apparently kill you. But if you do it outside or have the garage door open, I think you'll be fine, so be careful with that. The second thing is this large frame rail. This is one of the things that makes the La Jolla next bike kind of a, a, a difficult project bike for this because this frame rail is, is just extra big. And in this case, it was not only too tall, but it was too wide. The too tall could be taken care of. I went to Home Depot. A couple bucks later, I matched up some metric bolts that, that threaded perfectly into the original motor. And they were long enough but there still was about an eighth of an inch too much with this way. So that is where this came in. This and a rag, and I didn't even scratch the paint, and I gave her a couple of good, gave this end of her a couple of good twists, and, and I, I took an eighth of an inch out of this with no problem. I watched to make sure I didn't get any cracking at the top or the bottom, but once I got it pinched down to just the right width, you can see that this thing saddled on there quite nicely and it did it, it the, the geometry of the motor seems to be set for this this very shape here it really fits nice you can see here on the back one and on the front one so if you're worried about that and you have just enough clearance here so because of this downward swooping thing which is what makes the bike look so nice um, you still have enough room and it fits quite nicely um, and I think that's the main concern people were, were asking me about, the fitment of the motor and how I did it. So the biggest problem you're going to have is this. And the, the beta version of this, the first time I did this, I actually used... I have some around here. I had some here. I used flexible copper tubing, and I jammed it into the flange, and I uh, used electrical tape to booger it together. And that actually, I ran it that way for the better part of the first year. And it was just, you know, I was putting this thing together for the first time, didn't have my welder, and was like, well, what the heck, I'm gonna put this thing together and getting it going. And that's what I did, and I, and I fashioned the carburetor, you know, just clamped the carburetor to the half inch copper, just like it's clamped onto here, like it's supposed to be, and black electrical tape the thing up, and, and it actually worked out pretty good. The problem is black electrical tape, 
it uh, dissolves in gasoline. So it, it only lasted so long. Anyway, on to the next thing. That was the experimental version. You can booger up intake manifold together with anything. The other thing I had to do, or well, I did because of looks, is the muffler didn't have this much of a bend in it. It was kind of more straight down. So I just grabbed the thing and gave her a good twist and um, watched to make sure that I didn't kink the side of it. Let's hope my phone keeps focusing. I just made sure I didn't kink this and I think I had some pretty pretty good success. Didn't even mess up the, the chrome and uh, made this little bracket here to uh, hold the muffler so it doesn't didn't vibrate too much. Now back here I had to play the same trick with the fender, rag, and uh, the clamp. And I think on this one I actually used an oversized set of uh, channel locks, but either way, I pinched the fender down to give us a little bit more clearance right here. You can see that's, that's rather close. I also had to shave down this side of the motor mount because the the, the slack side of the chain, the bottom of the chain, it'll do this, and it likes to hit stuff, and you can see a couple of chips here on the fender and, and this, and I didn't want it catching too much on this, so I smoothed down this side of the bolt and the motor mount, and that was done. So, everything else is quite stock from the motor kit, and I'll tell you one of the things that I, I didn't like the most about this kit was the sprocket itself and how it clamps on here and I don't believe that there's another way they provide to do this um, but I couldn't get this thing on here perfectly centered so there's a little bit of this going on and you can feel it it's harmonic so it happens at certain speeds and doesn't at others it's not terrible and I put this bike together and rode it for three years I got 300 miles on it for goodness sakes um, and I have not had a problem but it does it is there and it buggers your spokes a little bit too these spokes are a little bent up from being clamped in there so tight. Um, the other thing I don't particularly care for, especially if you're letting other people ride this, once you get used to it, it's fine. But this is the original coaster brake. So you're, you're just hitting back on the pedals. That's what stops this thing. And it'll lock this tire up in a heartbeat and you'll be laying on your side. So you wanna be careful with that. I think that's about it. So I'll just give a little walk around here so you guys can kind of see it. But otherwise, I think it's a pretty cool looking bike. And it hauls. It's pretty strong. It's pretty torquey. Gets me going. And I do occasionally to take it easy on the clutch. The clutch has lasted quite a while and I don't care to break it. Um, I pedal around. I, I pedal off the start a little bit. You don't have to. It will go. But I pedal off the start because you, you, you have to kind of rev the motor up and then and then ease the clutch on to get going, depending on how heavy you are. And I'm gonna end up having to replace things. This thing is getting really buggered. So you can see I had to twist this a little bit to kind of direct the chain, because what I had happen, I think the first couple times I rode it, if I didn't have this thing adjusted just right, the chain would, would pop off. Um, and that was a pain in the butt. But once I got that thing kind of dialed in and. You know, it's, everything's adjustable. You know, you get everything kind of adjusted and you know, in and out, which, whichever you like. Um, so that's it. That's the bike. And uh, I hope I touched on everything you guys wanted to know and maybe wanted to see. So I'm going to head back in, take this thing back in and put it away. And uh, put my stuff away. See you guys on the next movie.